Hi, in this set of video videos, we're going to solve some uh, continuous probability distribution problems. Hopefully, uh, these videos will help you uh, practice to do these problems on your own first, and then look at the videos. And uh, more importantly, they they can be used to reinforce what you have learned in the um, in the material videos that were posted earlier. So, I strongly advise you to look at the questions, try to do it on your own first, and then uh, look at the videos to verify your answers. So, let's go ahead. Okay, so the first problem, uh, which is from our textbook by Keller, it's problem 8.6. Uh, it entails problem about a variable that has a uh, uniform distribution, which is the simplest form of a continuous uh, distribution, and it's simple, and I like always to start with these problems because it's easy for students to visualize the probabilities under the curve because the curve uh, or the probability density function curve is very simple. And... Um, even though it's simple, it provides a very good introduction to understand the procedure of finding probabilities under any probability density function, no matter how complex it is, because it's exactly the same logic. So let's start with that. Here we are given that a time to, uh, for a student to complete a quiz is uniformly distributed. Okay. And you know that for a uniform distribution, uh, we have two parameters. So it's uniformly distribu distributed. Uh, these two parameters are uh, the minimum, of course, that uh, this time can take, which is 30, and the maximum, which is 60. So um, we need to find the priorities of different events and we start with the simple one uh, the student requires more than 55 minutes uh, to complete the the quiz so first let's uh, define our variable the variable is the time it takes students to finish this quiz right as given in uh, on the top so I can describe X as being a uniformly distributed variable with two parameters, A and B. And we are always given these parameters, right? Usually you get them from historical data. And here we are given that these are 30 and 60. 30 and 60 as was given for us in the first paragraph. So you know that to find a probability, and because it's a simple PDF, we can just simply find the areas under the curve, the PDF curve. So let's see how does this PDF look like. So these on the horizontal axis, we have X, vertical, we have F of X, and we know that X is in the range between 30 and 60 as given. These are the parameters of the distribution. So how does F of X look like? How does the PDF look like? You know that because it's uniform distributed, it is a horizontal line, right? Given by 1 over B minus A. So it's a constant, which means that it's a horizontal line. So I can now plot it. Here we go. And what's the height of that? I mean, where does it hit the vertical axis? As given in the top. Uh, function it's 1 over b minus a so it's 1 over 60 over 30 in our case so it's 1 over 30 all right so it doesn't matter what's the scale on of our uh, uh, vertical axis right so this will be one unit in this scale which is 1 over 30 and then this can be 2 over 30 but i'm not going to need it anyway Okay, so the height is 1 over 30, and we're going to use the lot to find the areas. So now the question is, what's the probability that x is greater or equal than 55, right? That was the question. So what is that? Let's see where where is this in, in, on our curve. Here we go. This is 55. We know that it's 5 minutes away from uh, the, the, the upper the upper bound of our uh, distribution. 
So here we go. This is it. So we are mainly looking at this area, right? Because we know that probability is the area under the curve or under the line in this case. So let's call that A1. So which means probability that X is greater than 55 is A1. So all what I need to do now is to find the area of A1. You know, this is a rectangle and the, the area of a rectangle is what? It's the base, okay? Time multiplied by the height. Here we go. I know the base, which is 60 minus 55, so it's 5. And the height, I know it, it's 1 over 30. So that's it. This is our probability. You see, it's very simple. All right, all what you have to do is to know how does the PDF look like. And in the case of uniform distribution, it's always a horizontal line equal to 1 over the upper limit minus the lower limit. So let's answer two more questions. Okay, question B, part B. We need to find the priority that the student completes the quiz in a time between 30 and 40 minutes. Okay, so here I kept the PDF curve that we uh, uh, plotted in the previous slide. And the question here is find the priority of X between 30 and 40, right? So what's that probability? We know that it's equal to an area. So let's find this or locate this area in the curve. Here we go. So this is the 40. It's between 30 and 40. So we're looking at area A2. So we can write that the priority of X between 30 and 40 is equal to that A2. So just we need now to find the area. Again, try to do it yourself first. All right. So it's again, it's a rectangle. The area is base times height. So the base is 10. It's 40 minus 30. And the height is 1, 1 over 130. So we get a probability or equal to 0 0.333. Okay. So 33% chance that we'll get this value. Part C, the last part, what's the probability that the student completes the quiz in exactly 37.23 minutes? I would like you here to stop the video and think about this on your own. What do you think? What would be the probability that X is exactly equal to 37.23? Okay, I hope that you got it correct. The probability that x is equal to this is equal to zero. Why that? Because we learn that since a variable that has a continuous distribution means that it can have infinite number of values, which means the probability that x will assume a specific value is that small that we can say that it is equal to zero. So remember that. Okay, when x as a continuous probability distribution, the probability of X assuming a specific value is equal to zero. If you want to follow the approach of finding the area, it's like finding the area of a line, very, very thin line. So it's equal to zero, right? Okay. So I hope that was simple enough, but trust me, what you learn from such problems is very essential for even for more complicated PDFs. Okay, so let's move on to another problem. All right, problem 8.8 .8 refers to the same uh, um, problem description uh, in, uh, in problem 8.6, okay, the previous problem that we did. Uh, so that's why I, I um, give you again what was given to us in the previous problem, so for easy reference. Okay, so we were told that the time that takes student to finish a quiz is uniform distributed between 30 and 60 minutes. Okay, now simply just forget about that. Okay, we don't, we don't, this is coming from the previous uh, problem. We are not answering now these. We answered three questions, but now the question is, 
the professor would like to track students who are in the top 10% of completion time. Why that? Because you see, this is completion time. So the more time you take, most probably you need more help from the professor. So he wants to track the students who are on the top 10. So the question is, what's the completion time should he use? All right, so that he can uh, designate these students who finish beyond that time as being in the top 10% in terms of finishing or the completion time. So what do we have here? In the previous problem, we were given uh, uh, a certain value, certain range for x, and we wanted to find the probability. Here, it seems that we are working in the opposite direction. Here, we want to find x. We don't know that x, but we know the probability that x is greater than or equal than this value is 10%. So he, this is what I wrote here. Find x such that, remember this symbol, we use it for such that, p of x greater or equal than this specific x is 10%, right? This is given to us. We wanted uh, to uh, track this. So on the curve, here we go. We don't know that x, that's why I kept it as x, there's no value yet here. But I know the area here on the right hand side because we're given that p of x greater than this value is 10% or 0.1. Okay, so I don't know x, but I know the area, right? And But I know how to find the area. How to find the area? The area is, which is 0.1, it's equal to the height, okay, which is 1 over 30, nothing changed here. My PDF is still the same, so my uh, height is the same. And this is my base. Now, my base is unknown yet for me because it has the value x. I know that the base is 60 minus x, right? You can see that under the curve. It's 60 minus x. So what we can do now, we can multiply that 30 by the 0 0.1. Okay, um, I need to clean this up for you because you cannot see now what I just wrote. Okay, here we go. So we multiply 30 by 0 0.1. And on the right hand side, I still have 60 minus x. And now we solve for x. Here we go. So we bring x or uh, we multiply that first. So 3 equals 60 minus x. And then bring x to the left and 3 to the right. And here we go. x is 60 minus 3, which is equal to 57. Okay. This uh, problem is very important because unlike many probability problems where we are given a range of x we want to find probabilities sometimes we are given the probabilities and we want to find the corresponding x